Well, hello everyone. Um, it's me, Carmen. I'm back. As you would have seen in the title, I am here to talk about all of the books that I read this year so far. Um, kind of like the first quarter reading recap. <laughs> um, I don't know how long I'll be able to film. Uh, my daughter is sleeping right now, so I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to learn how to navigate filming and making videos while being a mom. All of you experts out there, give me all the tips. <laughs> Her feeding and napping schedule is, you know, fairly consistent right now, but yeah, I still, yeah, I'm gonna have to squeeze in my filming during her naps and everything. Um, so I'm not sure if I'll get it all filmed right now, today. Um, I also don't know how long this video is gonna be because I have read 25 books this year so far, and I'm gonna try to keep it short and sweet as far as my reviews and everything, especially for the books that I read in the beginning of the year because I don't, probably won't remember too many details about the book um, unless I really loved it, but um, yeah, and I so I don't know how long this video is gonna be and if there will be part one or part two, but you'll know in the title. Um, you know what I'm trying to say. I think. I don't know how to do this anymore. But, yes, as I said, I read 25 books this year, and that kind of blows my mind. I really thought that with becoming a mom, having a baby, all of the newborn um, things, <laughs> that I reading would just kind of have to be put on the back burner, and I probably wouldn't get as much done, but... It's actually been quite the opposite because I've been reading most of these books I've read on my Kindle and I just I didn't realize how easy it was to read on a Kindle and it's especially easy to read on a Kindle while feeding a baby, rocking a baby. So I spend a lot of time on this rocker, <laughs> feeding her, putting her to sleep, all of the things and in those little amounts of time in the last three months, two months that she's been born, but you know. So all the time I've been sitting here with her, I've been able to read quite a bit on my Kindle and it's much easier just to swipe <laughs> than turn pages and try to juggle a physical book while holding a baby and all that. Um, so yeah, all that to say, I've been able to get so much reading done, which I'm actually so grateful for. Um, and I'm on track, still on track with my reading challenge this year, and I'm actually doing better this year than I did last year at this time, so that's a win. And I'm just happy to be able to continue reading. I've definitely been um, mostly mood reading this year, and my reading has also kind of been based on what is available on my Kindle. I had subscribed to Kindle Unlimited back in December and I think it went through, I just did it like short term, December, January, and February I think. Um, and so whatever was available on there that I felt like reading or what was available through the Libby app from my library as well. So I did, I did read a few physical books but for the most part, all of these were on my Kindle, so I won't be holding up any physical books. Um, and we'll just be putting the covers here, I guess. We should just go ahead and get started though because we have a lot of books to talk about. And like I mentioned earlier, I probably won't be going into too much detail about the books, like their plot and synopsis and all of that, um, especially the ones that I read in the beginning of the year because it's been a while and I probably won't remember that much about it, but I will at least give my ratings and if I recommend them or not. Um, but the first one that I read was The Letter Tree by Rachel Fordham and I gave this one four and a half stars. I really enjoyed it, the You've Got Mail vibes a little bit going on. Um, it was just a great story, I really enjoyed it. Um, I do wish that it would have had a little bit more faith content um, for it being a Christian fiction book, but the story itself was still really great. I loved how the story played out and everything, so I highly recommend this one. It was really good. It definitely lived up to the hype that it was given um, from all the people I saw here on booktube reading it. Um, what am I saying? I don't know what I'm saying. 
I hope that makes sense, you know? Okay, I don't know how to do this anymore. <laughs> I think I was doing some kind of challenge, the brighter winter challenge, a little bit. So yeah, I did do some mood reading, but I also was trying to fulfill some challenges, so that's why this is just a random assortment of books. And I'm going in order of how I read them, not by genre, so hope you guys can stay with me. <laughs> um, the second book that I read was The Penderwicks. Um, Summer Tale of Four Sisters is the first one of the series. Um, I gave this one four stars as well. I really enjoyed it. It was a lot of fun. I love the characters. I love all of the adventures that the children had and just their family dynamics and stuff. I think there was some um, little bits of language in, um, in the book that I didn't love totally, and that's why I didn't give it a full five stars, um, if I remember correctly. Like I said, it's been a while, but I really did enjoy it, and I'm looking forward to reading the rest of the series. Overall, a fun mid-grade book um, to read. And then the next one that I read was Holy Labor by Aubrey G. Smith, um, and this one obviously was in preparation for um, giving birth <laughs> to our daughter. Um, I really enjoyed this one. It was very beautiful. I rated this one four stars. I really did love it. Um, it just really helped in preparing my mind um, for my up for my then upcoming labor. Um, and I loved how she drew so much from scripture and just kind of like gave a different perspective on birth and um, just the beautiful design that God had for it and how that theme is woven throughout scripture in so many different ways that I than I have had ever seen before or yeah just never really hear talked about as much um, just a little bit of a disclaimer there's just a little bit um, theological points that she like conclusions that she came to that I don't fully agree with but some of those concepts were a little new and I'd never heard them before, so they may just need some a little bit more wrestling with, <laughs> you know. Um, like, especially, I think it was more in the first two chapters or so that I wrestled a little bit with her conclusions. But the rest of the book I thoroughly loved and I agreed with most of it. But I do recommend it if you are about to have a baby or have already had babies and just want to, um, <laughs> you know read her perspective and if you want to just have a better vision for what motherhood is and how um, childbirth shapes our souls as the subtitle it says um, but anyway moving on the next one that I read was Strawberry Girl by Lois L Lenski I think is how you say that um, I found this one at the thrift store when I was working there and the cover and the title just jumped out at me I had no idea what the book was about or <laughs> anything going in but I purchased it because um, for about five years of my life we my family owned a strawberry farm and that was the only reason that this book jumped out at me because it said strawberry girl um, the book itself isn't all like completely about raising strawberries if I remember correctly I think it was set in the early 1900s in Florida um, kind of when they, it was first being settled, so maybe earlier. I'm not really sure about the time, like, of when this story was actually set, so forgive me if I'm wrong on that detail, but it is about a family who moves down there, and, um, they're kind of more like the rich or more well off than the locals there and they kind of have some tensions with the neighbors because they're different or they're from a different part of Florida or a different area and so um, just the different dynamics of coming to a new community and um, working through issues with the neighbors and everything. I did rate it four stars. I enjoyed it. The writing was a little bit of something to get used to but overall I think it was a fun story. As far as the writing that was a little bit hard to get into was just more like the local dialects that she used in her writing and the way they talked all of that um, as far as grammar goes not the greatest grammar but I still enjoyed it and I would recommend it it is a good um, mid-grade book the next one that I read was An Elegant Facade. This is number two in the Hawthorne House by um, Christy Ann Hunter. Um, I really enjoyed this one, just kind of continuing the storyline. Um, it does overlap a little bit with the first book, 
Um, so you're kind of reading the same scenes that you would have read in the first book, but just from a different perspective, um, which was interesting because I really loved the first book. Um, and I also really enjoyed this one. More because I did not like Georgina in the first book. She was def she definitely was portrayed as the spoiled little sister and she just seemed very selfish and all of that in the first book and still a little bit that way in this book but you definitely got more of her story and um, got more in her head <laughs> um, as far as why she was the way she was if that makes sense um, but yeah I enjoyed this one four stars as well um, and I look forward to reading the rest of the series to see to read more about the rest of the family I guess um, and then I picked up Spines and Leaves. Um, I think this is just kind of the beginning novella for the um, Book Strings series by Shatona Havig. Um, I really enjoyed this one. It was a lot of fun. All of the series actually because I ended up reading all of the ones that she has published so far. Um, rated this one four stars. I'll also go ahead and talk about um, Twice Sold Tales. It's book number one in the series. Um, really enjoyed that one as well. These are all four stars. I'm just going to quick say right now that I haven't read any very many five star books this year but I think it's a little more because I'm just being a little picky not because some of the books <laughs> don't deserve five star ratings. Some of them if I would read them again and maybe be in a different mood or something they would probably get five stars but I don't know. I've just been a little bit more picky this year. Um, and just kind of saving the five star ratings for the special books <laughs> but yeah overall I, just, I really enjoyed it, these these two books um, in the bookstring series so far and I definitely want to keep reading them as she publishes them I'm not sure how many are actually out I don't know but it, they just give you all of the bookish vibes I hate using the word vibes honestly <laughs> but that's what they give you um, all of the characters the, I love all of the characters in these stories, um, but Milton especially. Just him coming in and helping people get their bookstores up and running again. Um, yeah, these books are just delightful, so I highly recommend them for everyone. And then the next one that I read was Dear Henry, Love Edith by Becca Kinzer. Oh boy. I'm definitely in the minority here, but I did not enjoy this book. I only gave it three th goodness. I only gave it three stars, and that was being a little generous. How do I say this? Yeah, most of the issues I have with the book are probably more just my issues than the book's problem, if that makes sense. Because I don't. I've, number one, I don't really love contemporary romance. I. It's so hard for me to find any contemporary romances that I love. Um, and I also don't really enjoy rom coms apparently because I did not enjoy this. It just felt super uh, unrealistic, so, you know, when you watch, even watch rom-coms, like the movies. There are so many scenarios that are, you know, funny. They can be funny, but they're also so unrealistic that I don't find them funny. <laughs> I don't know if I'm making sense, but that's kind of how a lot of the scenarios in this book were, that I should have just enjoyed it as it was written and like just seen it <laughs> as a rom-com but some of the scenarios just felt a little bit too much like unrealistic that it almost took the humor away from them um, but again that's more of a me problem but yeah the the premise of it all of these two people living in the same house but like having different schedules so they never see each other and they both think the other is an older person um, but they're actually both young or around the same age and yeah that was that was really what grabbed my attention the most about this book but I then had an issue with the fact that even when they found out that they were both the same age and they started having feelings for each other they still chose to live in the same house, which I have a bit of a problem with because this is a Christian fiction book and um, it's not a good idea to be unmarried and the opposite sex and living together in the same house, especially if you like each other. 
you know, it's just not setting yourself up for success, you know? <laughs> um, nothing happens, which I will give credit to for that, but I, yeah, I just wrestled with that a little bit. Like I was saying, the, the premise is what drew me in of them not knowing the identity of the other one. But that ended very quickly in the book, like almost too quickly. And then they knew who they were. They knew that they had feelings for each other, but it took so long. Like I, <laughs> I wrote in my Goodreads review that I kept looking at the percentage and was like, how long is this gonna go? Because you guys clearly like each other, you know who you are, so go ahead and start a relationship. I don't know. I was just a little bit impatient with this book. I don't really want to give too many spoilers if you haven't read this book, but just some of the mm, deceit, I would say, even though the character justified it, I didn't think it was justifiable. Um, yeah. I don't know. I don't want to say too much because, I, like I said, I don't want to spoil it for anyone if you do want to read it. I think if you really like contemporary romances and rom-coms, you would really enjoy this book. Um, because so many people have enjoyed it. It's just not my type of book and I just have to be okay with that and also just be honest and stick to my review of it as far as my thoughts towards it and my rating because I didn't personally enjoy it that much but a lot of people did so there's my little spiel about that one. Then the next one that I read was The King Scrolls, number two in the Ilian Chronicles by J.L. Knight. Um, I'm totally loving these series. I'm still in the middle of it, as you will see in my, in the books that I mention later. Uh oh, I hear my daughter. She's stirring. Um, anyway, um, I rated this one four stars. Overall, I'm just really enjoying this series. Um, not gonna go too much into depth about what these books were about um, because all of the stories just kind of mesh together <laughs> in this world and in this series but um, yeah I really did enjoy this one and so far I would highly recommend them. Um, I love the fan fantastical <laughs> aspects of it um, but I love that there's no magic. I love the Christian themes in the book all overall. I, I, I'm really loving it. It's it's really good. Um, and then the next one that I read was M, M is for Mama, A Rebellion Against Mediocre Motherhood by Abby Holberstedt. I think that's how you say her last name. <laughs> Sorry, Abby, if I got that wrong. But I really enjoyed this one. Um, I felt like most of the scenarios and advice that she was giving um, is more for when my children are a little bit older because I read it while she was still a newborn. And so some of the um, the tips and advice uh, didn't really apply to my current situation, but I still gave this book five stars because I loved the theme of it. I loved her advice and I, I personally love following her on Instagram and her podcast as well that she has. Um, yeah, I just think she gives really good sound biblical advice for moms. And yeah, I would recommend this to all mothers out there. Um, the next one that I picked up was Rebecca of Sunnybrook Farm by Kate Douglas Wiggin. Oh goodness, this one. Uh, overall, my feeling towards it is just, yeah. Mm. <laughs> it was a good story. But the whole time I kept comparing it to Anne of Green Gables because it was so similar. And a funny story is that I this one was written before Anne of Green Gables was written. So I think Ella Montgomery kind of pulled that idea from um, Kate Wiggin. But Ella Montgomery did it way better. Way better. <laughs> As we all know because most everyone loves the Anna Green Gable series. And this one, uh, while I really enjoyed it, the characters just didn't come alive like I wanted them to for me, um, like they did with uh, Anna Green Gables. So, in my review on Goodreads, I said I gave it three stars because there were a few times it actually laughed out loud and a few beautifully written sections, but it was a little hard to connect with the characters and story. 
Um, but overall, it is a good story, and I would recommend it as a good American classic. Um, but it does pale in comparison as far as writing style, depth of characters, and plot, and all of that um, to Anne of Green Gables. So there's that. Um, then the next one that I read was The Faithful Spy, which I actually have the physical copy right here, so I'll hold it up, um, by John Hendricks. And this was actually for um, the February prompt for Chantel's Reader Bookshelf Challenge of reading. I'm doing the um, Doyle side, and it was a book less than 250 pages, I believe. And so I picked this one up, and I really enjoyed it. I think I gave it... Oh, I did... This is one that I rated five stars. Um, it was very informative, and I did enjoy the graphic novel um, style of it. Although some of it is a little hard to read. The writing is very small, and maybe my eyesight is just getting bad. I don't know. But I did struggle to read some of it, because the writing is so small. But I really enjoyed this one, and I do recommend it. Um, it's a good historical book, and um, I can't put this back on the shelf. <laughs> Um, I love Bonhoeffer's story, and this just brought out a different aspect of his story in a different way. I really enjoyed it. Then the next one that I read was Against the Tide by Elizabeth Camden. I rated it four stars. Okay, that makes sense. In my review, I, it's more of a three and a half star read, because just looking at the title, I don't even remember much about the story, but I do remember not loving it that much, not, like not enough to be a four star rating. So I might just drop it down to three on Goodreads, but like I said, I don't really remember much about this book. My daughter's crying, so I'm going to have to pause for a moment. I don't think I'm going to say much else about this book, except that it's just more of a three-star book for me. I, it was a good story, but I didn't totally love the characters. Especially the male main character. He just kind of, I just remember he kind of got on my nerves a bit. <laughs> but I can't even really remember why, so I apologize for not giving a great... Uh, you know, review of this book, but, or can't tell you much about it, I guess. Um, and then the next one that I picked up was Once I Knew by Victoria Lynn. Um, this is the first book in the Chronicles of Alira series um, that she's written. There's only two books out so far. I think she's working on the third book now, but, um, I, I really enjoyed this one. It was a beautiful story. I rated it four stars. But again, I'm not going to go into too many details about what the book was about because it has been a while. But I just, I do remember, um, I do remember loving the story though and the characters and um, the great faith content in this series. Um, I, I think I enjoyed the, this life of mine a little bit more. It's still four, four stars, but I... I enjoyed the the plot line and the characters specifically, like the two characters that this book is about, Marcus and um can't remember the girl's name. Ugh, that's my bad. Delara, I think is how you would say it. Um I, I really enjoyed their story. It was very beautiful and um yeah, overall really loving this series and I'm excited for her next book to be released, um, although I'm not sure when it will be, <laughs> but there are my reviews of those two books, at least. I do highly recommend them. And then the next one was a reread, The Scarlet Pimpernel by... <sighs> you know what? I'm not even going to keep that in there. I cannot pronounce the author's name, so that's my bad. I'm just going to butcher it if I try. But it was a reread, still a five-star read for me. I will say it took it took me a little bit longer to get through it this second time around, but I think it's because I did know the outcome of it and who the Scarlet Pimpernel was. Um, whereas, like, the first time, I wanted to find out who it was, and so I was just... I read it so quickly to try to figure it out. Um, but this time around, I knew what it was, or I knew who it was, and so that wasn't like keeping me going so it did kind of take me a while to read it all the way through it again but the story itself is just so good it's one of my all-time favorite reads I highly recommend it it's a great adventure story um, and just like the whole mystery of like who the identity of the Scarlet Pimpernel is and um, this 
hero who is saving the French um, people from the guillotine. So this is set during the French Revolution when everyone's heads were being chopped off. <laughs> um, and he's just rescuing them and bringing them over to England. And nobody knows who he is. And yeah, it's, it's just a great story. I highly recommend it. Um, and then this next one that I read was just a short novella. I think it's only, um, yeah, it's only 120 pages. Just a very short story, The Uncommon Reader by Alan Bennett. This is a story about the queen, um, or I should say the late queen of England. Um, I don't know that this is based off of anything true or accurate about her life, but it's just a story about her um, discovering reading and like for the sake of reading and just the pleasure that you get out of it. Um, I would say it was a fun little read. It was an interesting story, but as one of my friends <laughs> rated it, she only rated it two stars and said the synopsis promised more than what the book gave and I would agree with that. I gave it three stars um, just because I enjoyed it. It was... <sighs> yeah, some of the characters were fun and just like going along with the queen and her discovering different authors and different books and just her thoughts about those books and how it just kind of like changed her perspective about different things. It was it was fun but there was there was some content goodness there was some content that I wasn't um, really comfortable with or didn't really enjoy um, and I think some language as well but you know overall it was it was it was interesting I don't think I'd ever read it again though um, so it probably could be dropped down to a lower rating but we'll leave it at three stars for now <laughs> um, next one I picked up I think this was one of the first books that I read in March um, in its entirety um, and so it was a little bit for mid-grade March but I picked up The Wild Robot by Peter Brown. This was recommended by Chantel, and um, it's actually my sister's book because I was at home in Georgia for my brother's wedding um, at the time, and so I just was grabbing some of the books off of her shelf to read for mid-grade March, but I really enjoyed this book, actually, I which is a little surprising to me because I personally despise the idea of robots in this world and because you know all of the movies and stories about the robots taking over I don't know robots have just always like creeped me out uh, yeah we're just, we're just gonna leave it at that <laughs> but this one this particular robot I really did enjoy her story and it was it was just a lot of fun and I would recommend it myself. I gave it four stars. The next one that I read was A Midnight Dance by Joanna Davidson Palatano. I loved this one. This was another five star read for me. Um, one of the few of the 25 books that I read <laughs> um, that actually got five stars. Such a beautiful story. Um, the characters and I loved the setting of the Victorian ballet and yeah there's a little bit of a plot twist um that I really loved <laughs> and yeah I would highly recommend this one it's so good I I love Joanna's books and this was just another really great one okay so then the next one that I picked up was also one of my sisters um was Alone by Megan E. Freeman I read this one in one day granted it is written in free verse style so chapters are very short and yeah it is over 400 pages but it's not your typical book because it's written in free verse but I actually really enjoyed that aspect of the story and I loved just the whole plot all of the just everything about it um, basically she just wakes up one night and discovers everyone in the in the town that she lived in everyone including her family had just disappeared and she had no idea why she had no idea where everyone was she had no idea if anyone was coming back for her and so this was just her um, just trying to survive in this town on her own um, I think she was only 12 
Yes, she was only 12 when it happens, and so it kind of goes over a couple the next couple years of her living alone in this town and just trying to survive. I was so invested in the story the whole time and was just always curious to see how she would get out of um, any little scrapes that came up and just, yeah, the way her mind worked in order to survive and face all the challenges that she that came up um, with living alone, not having any idea what kind of disaster happened that everyone had to be evacuated out and then she was just stuck there alone. <sighs> but I do recommend it. It was a great, it was a great fun read. The next one I picked up is also another mid-grade book. Um, it is Book Scavenger, book one in the Book Scavenger series by Jennifer Chambliss Bertman. Goodness, I loved this one. I did rate it for five stars. Um, so, so much fun. I do love this whole idea of um, hiding books and finding them kind of like the geocaching thing that people do. I have never really done geocaching myself, but I think it's fun to like to go find these little spots by following clues and leaving a book there for somebody to find or finding one that someone left for you. Um, just a lot of fun and I loved the characters, um, Emily and her friend James, yes, I could not remember his name, but I loved them. Their, their friendship was fantastic and I just love the whole plot line of Emily discovering a new game that, um, like the whole mystery that Emily stumbled upon. You just have to read the book to, to know what I'm talking about because I don't want to give any spoilers. It's it's just all, all of it was so much fun. I totally loved it and I, yeah, definitely want to get my hands on my own copy because this was also my sister's and I want to get my hands on my own copy so I can have it here and I want to read the rest of the series. I just hope the rest of the series lives up to this first one because it was so good. I loved it so much. So good. And highly recommend um, for a good mid-grade book. Then I read Samara's Peril, number three in the Ilion Chronicles. This one I ended up rating five stars. I think this one is my favorite of the series so far. Um, just because it went more into depth um, of one of my favorite characters stories, Jace, and just, yeah, his whole story, it just tugs on the heartstrings and it all just like kind of came together in this book and I, I loved it so much. So this one was, was a five star read. The next two books that I read um, are the Suddenly Sadie series or duology, I think there's only two books. Um, Sadie on the Rocks and then Rider on the Wall um, by Joanne Biscoff. I purchased these on Kindle, um, had no idea what they were about, but they looked, or at least the covers, looked interesting, and I love Joanne's writing so much. One of my all-time favorite books is The Lady in the Lionheart, as if you've been here a while, you know that's one of my top favorite books um, from last year, and of all time, probably. <laughs> but. Um, yeah, so these books are about Sadie, who is a single woman in her 30s, and just her navigating the single life and finding um, a new vision and new purpose in life, and instead of just waiting around for um, a guy to come along in marriage. And I think if I would have known that going into these books, I don't know that I would have read, I would have picked them up because... Um, I'm not in that season anymore um, of being single, but I'm actually really glad I picked them up because I, I really enjoyed both of these books. I've only been married three years and in a relationship for four, <laughs> so my single years f still feel fairly close, and so I, I do still remember um, my thoughts and feelings during that time and I really related to Sadie and um, but yeah I think I would have enjoyed them a lot more <laughs> when I was single and they probably would have inspired me to do more things <laughs> while I was single than I already did but 
Um, yeah, I really enjoyed these and I recommend them, especially to the single, to my single friends out there and even those who are married or in a relationship because it's just a good story, you know? Um, and no, there's not really romance in the story. I don't really want to spoil it too much, but, um, yeah. Most of the focus is on her, um, singleness and, but like in a good, healthy way, I would say. And just her navigating life through that and finding joy and purpose in that specific season. Both of these books I really enjoyed and I would recommend them. I think in our, um, Christian circles, I would say, there is so much, um, emphasis put on finding a significant other and getting married and all of that, um, and placing all of the value on that, and not placing much value on being single, and I think we do a disservice to the single people in our churches and in our families and all of that, and I think Joanne did a great job of, um, bringing that out in the sense of showing value um, to being single and because I think I think singleness and marriage both are a gift and I really enjoyed my single years and I really enjoy being married and now being a mom but like yeah I, anyway I don't really want to go off into a tangent about all of this because this isn't what this video is about, but all that to say, I think these books just did a great job of pointing some of those things out, and um, I do recommend them. They were really great, and I highly recommend Joanne Biscoff as an author. <laughs> I have not read a book yet that I haven't loved by her. Um, but yes, uh, and now we're down to the last book. I actually just finished it today, but I'm still going to include it because I read the majority of it in um, March, but it is Exiles book number four in the Ilion Chronicles, and um, I rated this one four stars as well. Overall, I would say the series is a five star series, um, but as far as each individual book, um, only the third one so far has really given me a five star feeling, but, you know, the overarching story of <laughs> the series gives me five star feels, if that makes sense. Um, but yes, I am excited to continue reading the rest of the series and just to see how she wraps everything up in this world and in this, the storyline that's been happening through all of the books. Um, but yeah, I really do highly recommend them. And yeah, that concludes my wrap up, all 25 books that I read in the first quarter of this year. It was a lot. Oh goodness, and I hope you guys were able to, you know, stay with me, jumping from genre to <laughs> genre and just all of the different books and me trying to keep my scattered thoughts together, you know, as I talk about these books. But anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed it and let me know down in the comments what your favorite book was so far this year. Um, out of all of the ones that I've read, I would have to say A Midnight Dance or Book Scavenger <laughs> um, would be my top favorite reads of this year, um, excluding the Alien Chronicles. Like, that whole series is just top, but, you know, I think, I think I'm going to sign off for now. And, yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. Um, it's good to be back, although I don't know how much I will be back <laughs> because I don't have as much time to film. I have a feeling I'll only be doing one or two videos a month right now, but who knows? I might be inspired and I might be able to find more time and um, be able to squeeze in some other um, videos if I come up with some good ideas, I guess. But yeah, you guys can also let me know what you would want to see if you have any recommendations of some quick videos that I could um, post. But yeah, um, that's it. Again, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate all of you guys um, for supporting me in this. I really do love our little book community. 
here on this little corner of booktube <laughs> but anyway um, I will see you guys in the next video whenever that is <laughs>